number one, say, he is worthy of our praise. And I put here, praise and the river of his presence. Because how many know praise releases his presence? In Psalms 100, 1 through 7, are you believing with me now? You didn't come for me to entertain you, right? Let's see how this guy does on a scale of 1 to 10. You came to believe with me, right? This is not a show, right? I didn't come to entertain you. I come to preach and prophesy over you. Amen. Sometimes we come to church looking for the show. I'm not going to put a show on. I'm going I'm to preach and prophesy. Say, he is worthy of our praise. Psalms 100, 1 through 7. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving or grateful praise. Let us, there it is again, shout joyfully to him with psalms. So for those that say, freedom is too loud for me, you're going to have a hard time when you go to heaven. Because when you get to heaven, that bass is so on point, that's like bass in your face. The bass is so strong in heaven that when that angel angelic choir kicks in, the place shakes where the foundation shakes. Feels like it's an earthquake. Come on, somebody. And it's so loud, it's unbelievable. It said it's like, it's like the sound of like a, like, like a Yosemite waterfall. But multiply that by a thousand. It's just... <sighs> the devil has nothing on God's praise. So when people say, well, I don't believe in shouting all out in church because you don't believe the Bible because you're still trying to make God fit into your little pea brain head and your religious strategy or your personality profile. But when it comes to God, you praise him his way on his terms because he is worthy of it. Now, somebody ought to be obedient and shout joyfully to the Lord. Yeah, why, Pastor? Because why? Why should I do that? For, for the Lord is gr a great God. Ah, uh, how great is he? Well, he's the great king above all other gods. Well, that's pretty great. And his hands are... And his hand are the deep places of the earth. So as low as you can go, God's going to be there. And the heights of the highest hills, God's going to be there. And the sea, it's his. Imagine God's water bill. He made it. And he made the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. He is worthy of our absolute praise. I looked up the word praise. I looked up the word praise, and it comes from a, a Hebrew word called tehilia. Not tequila. Got to explain that at freedom. You know, people here, you know what I mean? Tehelia. Say it with me. Tehelia. And it means a celebration. So when we praise God, it needs to be a celebration. 
Like I was sitting there and I thought, man, it would be great. We should have big balloons and everything right now. Like a big, I said, why? Because we're praising God. Like confetti and fire. Like we're praising God, man. I think I'm going to launch somebody on a cannon up there. Like, Hallelujah. Allotting, it means a cheering. A cheering. Watch this. Making much of somebody to glorify, exalting of someone that is praiseworthy, giving them songs of adoration and admiration. And I thought, man, this is interesting to me. Because I like sports. I like the NBA. I like everything, right? And on a good, like yesterday, the Milwaukee Bucks beat the Atlanta Hawks. And then about a minute in, 10 seconds, 20 seconds left in the game, the Atlanta Hawks coach realized there's no way his team's going to win. So he pulled all his best players off the floor. And the next thing you know, the people erupted with praise. Because even though their team lost, they really did the best they could, like the little engine that could, that kid Trey Young. And they just did the best they could with what they had. They just didn't have enough talent. But the people honored them and praised them because they realized, man, our Atlanta Hawks are worthy of praise. And the whole auditorium, 20,000 people, stood up for about a minute and just shouted and praised their NBA basketball teams. And the announcer, before it happened, said, I hope they do that. Because that's what you do when somebody's worthy of your praise. But yet, when it comes to God, you're trying to tell me that being loud is wrong, but yet I could praise Trey Young? I could praise LeBron James. I, I could praise Michael Jordan. I, I, I could praise Mike Tyson. I can praise, but I can't pray. What? Something has, something is wrong. Who told us to be quiet in church? Who told us that that's wrong in church? Somebody trained you, educated you that that's not the way you do it in church, but yet we do it at the NBA. We do it at the Los Dodgers. Come on, somebody. We do it with the prize fighter. We do it with a, a band. We do it at Coachella Fest. We do it in the nightclub. Now I wish somebody would give God a Tahelia. We got to break the spirit of religion and tradition. Somebody told us to be holy was to be pious. Hallelujah. Espiritu Santo. God bless you, my brother. There's nothing wrong with that. Do your thing, brother. But don't stop me from praising my God the way my Bible said. And the Bible said we shall become more undignified than this. The roof, the roof, the roof. <laughs> Say it! And that is why we have lost a generation because the spirit of religion and the spirit of judgment and the spirit of condemnation has taken the shout out of Zion. But when David brought the ark of God back, he said, it's time to give God the praise that he is worthy. Is he not worthy of your shout? Is he not worthy of your hallelujah? Is he not worthy? He is worthy. Let us, Psalms 95, 2, let us come into his presence, presencia, with, come on. Same thing, praise. Let us shout. There it is again. It's all over. You, 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 look at the book of Psalms 
It's called the book of praise. Those were, no, those were not meant to be read. They're meant to be sang. And over 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 and over, you find where the Bible talks about clap your hand and raise your hand and dance before the Lord and make music and shout and sing. And, and then yet the church are like, mm. like, and then when you do that, people get real like, oh, that, they're crazy. They're so crazy. They're such a hypocrite, huh? Well, that, that church is too, church you go to some wild. It's just so crazy. And you're like, wait a minute. You're the same joker that drank like seven dos equis, three spritzers, come on somebody, and five shots, and you acting like a fool up in the nightclub, and now you're going to tell me that my church is crazy. You crazy. You a hypocrite. I'm going to give God glory, man. Yeah, see how we are? We're selective on our praise. Yeah, we're, the, the baseball team can get my praise. The, the basketball team can get my praise. The actor can get my praise. The movie star can get my praise. The, the famous singer can get my praise. Everybody else can get it, but not God. Not God. The devil is a filthy liar. You see the lie? It's a lie. And we're going to break this in the Sound of Freedom series. All right, tell your neighbor, when you praise... When you tell him, when you praise, you come into his presence. How many love the presence of God? Right? Like at an NBA game, like when, I remember one year Robert Ori made a shot. It was like Sacramento Kings, and we hated them, you know what I mean? North versus South, we hated the Kings. Lottie Divock, all that, we just didn't like them. Bibby, and we just, no, if you're a Laker fan, you just didn't like the Kings. You didn't like their face. You just, you, it was like a, when you were a baby, they put on your baby bottle, you do not like the kings. Come on, somebody. Just put it in your formula. You hate the king. So, you know, and then, and then, and then Robert Ori made that shot. And man, it was so euphoric. I was in my living room and I remember pushing my friend on the floor and we're like rolling on the floor. Ah! That was praise. And Robert Ori deserved it right there. That was amazing. You, do, you try to do something like that in church? Oh, they're weird. They're fanatic. Oh, they're over the top. We have to renew our mind and not allow people and religion to steal what belongs to God. He's the rock of your salvation, brother. You're going to heaven because of him. <laughs> Period. Period. Dot. That's all she wrote. Sign it, baby. Psalms 46.4, read with me, say, oh, I love this. This is the first time I ever saw this, ever, last night. Say, there is a river. Just say, like, tell your neighbor, there's a river. Tell your other neighbor, there's a river. And tell your neighbor, and the streams of this river bring joy. Okay, so there's a river. And what if somebody told you, there's a river. And if you find that water and you drink it, you'll live forever. What, what, what's the next thing you do? Where is it? <laughs> what if somebody told you, there's a river, you drink it, and you get 15 years of strength. What, 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 what's, your next, what's your next question? Oh, no, first you, you're going to play it off like, oh, really? So, uh, so where is it? <laughs> So where, where is that, uh, that, that river? Or I'm like, I love fishing. So if he said, man, there's a river in Whittier. Yeah, and there's, no one knows about it. But in that river is trout, big trout. Really? Yeah, in Whittier, yeah. Where is it? Because <laughs> I'm about to get my pole and my hiking boots and jump some fence or something because I'm going to get to that river. And the Bible says there is a river. Say, there is a river. Come on, just elbow somebody. Say, there, there is a river. And this river brings joy to the entire city of God. That's why I believe the church needs to be the happiest place in the world. Your family group needs to be the happiest. Why? Because there's a river going through that.
This river is in the holy place where the Most High lives. So this river literally flows from the throne of God. So basically, God's on his throne. There's the river. And from there, the river goes from God. And how many know God is full of joy? It's almost like he pollutes the water with joy. And then from God, it goes throughout the city. And everybody's drinking that joy juice. <laughs> because the river comes from his presence. If you get rid of the river, you still have the joy because the river came from him. Tell your neighbor, there is a river that cures depression, that cures bipolar disorder, that cures panic attack. I know you went through battle, and I know you've been to war, and I know you got postpartum, but there is a river. Oh, Psalm 1611. One more time. Tell your neighbor, there is a river. And if, you, if, I can, if God can get you in that river, your days of depression are over. Your days of addiction are over. Your days of suicide are over. Your, your, your days of depression and oppression and, and anxiety, anxiety. When you, we can get you down in that river, baby. I was dipped in that river and I've never been the same. I was a drug addict and I got dipped in the river and I've been set free. Shout, there is a river. Tell them, in your presence. Say presence. Now say this with me. God, God lives, lives in, the pres in the praises of his people. In your presence. In your pr so you got to think like this. Praise brings presence. Praise brings presence. You're the devil. What are you afraid of? You ain't afraid of me. He ain't afraid of you. But he's afraid of who you can release. When praise goes up, his presence comes down. I feel like preaching a little bit. I said when praise goes up, His presence comes down. And in His presence, there is joy. In His presence, there is peace. In His presence, there is victory. When praise goes up. Because God is attracted to your praise. He cannot resist your praise. Tell your neighbor, you want to know why God saved you? You should have been dead. You should have lost your mind. You should have died on the 605. But God spared you because he knew when he set you free, he was going to get a praise out of you. It's like the woman at the well. He said, I got to go to Samaria because in Samaria, I'll find me a woman that I'll fill with my power and I'll get a praise out of her. Somebody give God a shout of praise. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to take my time. Say with me, in your presence is the fullness of joy. 
and at your right hand are pleasures. What kind of pleasures? See, that's what we're looking for, pleasure. Satisfy me. That woman at the well, she was looking for another man. If I get me another man, then I'll have pleasure. And God told her, you don't need another man. You don't need another pill. You don't need another drink. What you need is that river. And my friend, there is a river. Elbow somebody and say, there is a river of his presence. It's not just joy. It's a fullness of joy. Say amen. amen. Psalms 36 says, they are refreshed. This is crazy. With rich foods in your house. I grew up on Top Ramen. And man, I'll tell you, I'll make a top ramen look like a gourmet steak. I'll tell you that right now. I don't even want to tell you where I learned how to make a spread. Come on, somebody. Some of you are looking at me like, you know about a spread? Yeah, I know about a spread. Now watch. But you know, I've also been to some, some bougie restaurants. You know what I mean? Where you go and they put your chair out. Oh. One the first time somebody did that, I said, what are you doing? I can sit myself. I was like... They put your chair and they scoot you in. Oh, and they get a little napkin and they put it on you like they go. Oh. I look at Liz and say, see, I told you, girl, follow me. And they, say, they put napkins on us and stuff. And they, they Raider comes out with some sparkling water, sir. Like this. Pour it. Oh, wait, everything's perfect. You drop crumbs on the table. They get a little scraper. Wow. And they start bringing the food out. Yeah, I'll take that steak. Uh huh. How much is it? Fifty-eight. Fifty. Fifty-eight dollars. We're gonna share. Yeah, we'll take it. Come on. Son. You want that to go? Yeah, I want it to go. Come on. But God says, in my house, you eat rich foods. How many know? You eat what you become what you eat. And when you start eating the rich food, get, get ready for the riches of God. Because it takes your processing to another level. Shout rich food. And say, and you make them drink from the river of your pleasure. You make them drink from the river. At, in God's house, you don't just eat rich food, but God gives you a strong drink. He gives it from the river. He literally says, hey, Gabriel, here's a cup. Dip it in the river. Give it to Samuel. Give it to Sarah. Give it to I. Drink up. Drink up. And when you drink and you drink and you drink, depression leaves your body. Somebody ought to shout like there is a river. Oh, I got to hold. I feel like I'm holding a... A horse, like a fat, a thoroughbred horse. Just let me finish. Say, I will be satisfied. Now, I need you to say it out of your heart. I will be satisfied in your presence. So that means if you're not in the presence, you have been built by God to be satisfied. Let me say it, let me listen to what I'm saying. You and I have been built by God to be satisfied. When you eat at a table like I just talked about and you're done, you are done. You're like, you want dessert? I can't eat anymore, I'm full. And God says, that's how I want you to live when it comes to satisfaction. And the devil brings that midnight booty call. You say, no, girl, I'm full. When your old friends call you, it's time to party on the 4th of July. No, I'm, I'm full. Come on, somebody. When your ex-lover calls you at 2 in the morning, what's up, girl? 
sorry, Joker, but I'm full. Cause I've been full on the new wine. Somebody shout like yours. That's why. I'm gonna drop a heavy word on you. A lot of you are not normal. You weren't normal in the world. You know, everyone else partied. They went home at 12 and it was 2 a.m. And you're like, the party's getting started. I know that ain't everybody, but there's a few of you jokers in here. I'm gonna talk to you for about 30 seconds. You're the ones that I'm gonna talk to because you can't be like everybody else. You're gonna have to drink the river on another level because you came out of so much crap. God's gotta deliver you. You're gonna have to. Somebody shout, I'm satisfied. Yeah, this, this bass shakes so much, it shakes my water off, you know? We're gonna start a new ministry. Catch the water ministry. Psalms 21, six says, oh, <laughs> this is good. Tell your neighbor, this is what the Bible says. That's the wrong neighbor. Turn to another neighbor, say, turn to somebody who's looking sad and say, hey neighbor, God says he cheers you up with joy in his presence. How many know in the church we may come in sad, but you're gonna get hit with joy? And, and, and Psalm 65, one, this is one of my favorite scriptures I've read in a while. This is, everything we read is what God does, but Psalm 65, one is, is what we've been doing here. And this is David singing to God, he says, Hey, God. Hey. It's me, Dave. And God's like, I know who you is. You're my boy. What's up, Dave? And, 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 da and David says, you know, I'm the leader now. I'm the leader. I'm in charge now. And, and I built this wonderful worship. And I'm telling you, praise awaits you. <laughs> that's, that's called anticipation. Praise is awaiting you. Praise is awaiting you. So that means it's like a surprise party. Everybody's quiet. Are they coming? They're down the block. Right? They come in the house. Surprise! I mean, you can't surprise God. But David says, but praise awaits you in Zion. That means David, the leader, said, I praise you. I've been praising you from when I was on the backside. My dad left me. My mom left me. They didn't even believe in me when the prophet came. But I was over here praising you. Watch, 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 watch. I was praising you and you found me. And when you found me, you, you, had, a, you, knew, you, you had a man who was after your heart. And so, I, so you found me and you took me and you raised me over the last 17 years. Now it's 20 years and you've raised me and now I'm the leader of Israel. But I'm the same David. But what I've done now is I've built a culture that it's not just me in the wilderness anymore, but everybody in the church is like me now. And we're waiting for you. You're gonna, you're gonna catch that next week. Come on, and we're waiting for you. And that's what we do all week, don't we? We have an eight hour meeting on Tuesdays. Wednesdays, we're planning all day. Thursday, we're planning all day. Friday, all day yesterday, people, Saturday, from morning till night, setting everything up. For what purpose? Because the people are coming. And what are they coming for? The people are coming to praise you in Zion. Praise awaits you. I'm gonna know on Sunday morning, that's why you gotta be in the house of God. 
you got to get here and be part of these people that say we're waiting and when you come in the room we're going to lift up a voice of victory somebody ought to give god the praise that he's worthy of praise awaits you in zion lift your voice to the lord How many love God? So don't ever let the devil steal that. If somebody somebody says, I don't like your church, they're too that way, just say, you don't like God. You want God to be your God, but He's not only your God, He's the God of the Bible. And you can't pick and choose. You got to obey the God of the Bible. And the God of the Bible wants to be shouted at. He wants to be adored. He wants to be sang to. He wants to be danced in front of. He wants to be clapped. He wants to be. Sh- he wants it all. He wants it. You can't just give it to your favorite star. You got to give it up to the Most High. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to go ahead and give God the Tahelia that He's worthy of. One, two, three. Give Him. The glory, the honor, the praise, His goodness. Number two, I have two minutes left, so I'm going to take four minutes. Number two. One of the sounds of freedom is the sound of thanksgiving. Psalms 92, 1. Now, say this with me out loud. It is good. How many know if God says it's good? It's good. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and sing His praise. I looked up the word thanksgiving or thanks it comes from the Hebrew word toda say it with me toda it means the same thing adoration and praise the only difference it means to lift the hands with thanksgiving for all that he's done Well, I don't want to lift my hands. Let's try it again. It means to lift the hands with thanksgiving for all he's done and celebrate him, cheer him, glorify him, make much of him, exalt him, sing admiration to him with lifted hands. So when we say, hey, lift your hands to heaven, what are we actually saying? I heard somebody say one time, and I I understand what they were doing. They said, well, if if you want to lift your hands, go ahead. And I thought, well, that's kind of different. But then as I read this, I said, no, it's not if what you want to do. If you want to shout to the Lord, go ahead. No, the Bible says shout to the Lord. If you want to clap, no, the Bible said clap your hand. If you want to dance, no, the Bible says dance before. If you know, there's no want to. Either, either he's worthy or he's not worthy. I said either he's worthy. Is he worthy? I said is he worthy? Is God worthy of your total? Would you slip your hands to heaven? Sing it, Aubrey, over us. Uh, before we go any further, I feel this is a moment where maybe in your heart you haven't been praising God. Maybe you didn't understand this up until today. Let's take it higher, church. Could you lift your voice? 
and sing this from your heart, your corazón, your heart. That's what God is after. It's not just words. It's your heart He's after. Let's take it higher, freedom. Could we? In one accord, with hands lifted. That's it. running after me let's worship your goodness I believe it do you believe it Give him one more shout of praise. Give him a Tahelia. Give him a Toda. Hallelujah. You see, church, we're going to land with this because I felt like the Lord really was going to help somebody today. See, the Bible, the Israel got, they got into the promised land and then they got in trouble. And the Lord says, because you did not serve, keyword, serve the Lord your God with joy and a cheerful, a cheerful heart and, a, and gratitude for all the abundance of all these things. Now you're going to have to serve your enemy. You see, the lack of thanksgiving and praise is a form of pride. And I felt like the Lord say, warn freedom that I bless them with this beautiful building. I've blessed many of them financially and I'm going to continue to bless them and their families. I've, I'm giving you a, your own private school. I've given you a private Bible college. I've given you a school of ministry. I've given you lifestyle of freedom. I, I've given you freedom training center. I've given you freedom family group. God has blessed you. God has taken care of you. We will not allow a spirit of ungratefulness and pride to rob us of a lifestyle of thanksgiving and praise. But the Bible says when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart is lifted up and then you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. We will not be those people. We will not be those that got to the promised land but got defeated in the promised land because we stopped doing what we did to get us into the promised land. We got to keep doing to keep us in the promised land. And what got us in the promised land? An attitude of gratitude. Come on, a toda got us in. A church that was willing to praise God no matter what. Can I get an amen? And we're not ashamed and we're not going to start getting, watch me. We're not going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and get weaker and weaker. That's what's happened to so many times. The church gets mega, mega, mega. And all of a sudden, oh, we can't, we, do, we, don't, we don't do that no more. The, the rich people will get offended. The older givers will get offended. The new people will get offended. No, they weren't here when we got here. And they have to fit into what we're going to do. Because here, we do one thing. We don't glorify Pastor Jason. We don't glorify the worship team. We don't glorify a building. We've come for one purpose and one purpose alone. We've come to glorify our God. We've come to glorify our Savior. We've come to glorify our Lord. We've come to glorify our God. Now somebody give your God some praise. Come on. You see church, our praise it's not just singing. It's also our service. You come, some of you would come early to set the generators up. 
What are you doing? You're praising God. Some of you come and you work on the buses all week so people can have air conditioning and nice experience and you wash them. Nobody sees it, but you're praising God. Some of you work to set up the sanctuary, the music. What do you, nobody sees, but what, what are you doing? You're praying, you're, because you're saying, I'm preparing the house of God. So I'm telling God, God, praise awaits you in Zion. Praise awaits you in church. We're getting ready for Sunday. Sundays are coming and the people are gonna come and I wanna make sure the bathrooms are clean. I wanna make sure the worship's right. I wanna make sure everything's ready so when they come in, they can worship you and praise you. It's our service. Our praise is not just singing, it's also our, our generosity, our giving. It's, it's also our heart. It's, our, it's who we are. It's a lifestyle. It's not just Sunday we make a bunch of noise. We are confident to shout on Sunday because we serve God Monday through Sunday. Come on, somebody. The grateful heart loves to serve Jesus, loves to give to Jesus, loves to praise Jesus. First Chronicles 16, 29 says, oh, don't get quiet on me now. Don't come talk about I'm a praiser and you ain't serving. I'm a praiser and you ain't tithing. The devil's a liar. Come on, I'm a tither. I'm a servant of God. I'm a praiser. Come. Your goodness. Look at give to the Lord the glory and honor. Do his name. Ask your neighbor, what do you owe God? Ask him, because you don't pay God, you, you pay God with your serving, you pay God with your gratitude, you praise God with the fruit of your lips, that's how you pay God back. Ask your neighbor, what, what kind of glory do you owe? What kind of honor do you owe? What is due from you? That's the wrong neighbor. Turn to another neighbor and say, what, how much glory do you owe? How much honor do you owe? What, what, you, what, 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 what's due? Come on. I, I can't sit here and say, I don't owe God some glory. I, I, I can't sit here and say, I don't owe him some honor. I, I can't sit here and say, I don't owe God some glory. I've come through too much not to give him the glory that is due. Those are strong words. Those are like fighting words. Watch this. Hey, hey, give God the glory and the honor, okay, that you owe him. That I owe him? That I, I can never pay him back. I should have I should have been dead a long time ago. The, the glory and honor, I can't pay him back. I know, but you can give him glory. You can give him honor. You can give him praise. You can serve him. You can kill, you can worship, you can bless his holy name, you can magnify the Lord, you can exalt him today. Your goodness. Hey, 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 ready? Give him a toda. My life laid down. That's all you want. That's the, that you don't ever lose that, Jacob. With my life, don't ever lose that. How many know we lose that? When I got saved, off, I said, Lord, what, what do you want? I got no money. I got nothing. I, I'll just give you my life. I feel, a, I feel it. I feel a brokenness coming on the congregation. I feel a brokenness, a gratefulness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, Toda. 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 When I got saved, 
was a drug addict. Nobody wanted me. And I thought all of this was too good to be true. And I had that talk conversation with God, come on, man. What, what, do you, what do you want from me? And it was my conversation with God is, but then, what do you want? I want your life. Here. It's not much. But here. So here you go. Here's my two fish. Here's the five loaves of my life. Don't ever lose that freedom. Let me know what I'm talking about. I don't have a lot, but here. And God blesses you. Don't ever lose that. I said, don't ever lose that. Don't ever, ever let the devil steal that. That brokenness, that gratefulness, that humility before God. Don't ever lose that. Give to the Lord the glory that is due and honor his name. Bring an offering with thanksgiving, of thanksgiving. And come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. I'm not going to pick up an offering, so some of you are already tripping. That's the problem. I should, just to get you delivered, but I'm not. Psalms 96, 7 and 9. Give to the Lord, O families of the people. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory that is due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. When we give God Toda, we're giving him our service. We're giving him our finance. We're giving him our, the fruit of our lips, our shout. We're giving him our heart. We're giving him everything. And that's why it's so powerful. Because when real praise goes up, it's not just words. It's it's your hours you spent working on the house of God. It's, it's every time the devil tempted you to go the wrong way and you said, no, I'm going to serve God. It's every time your friends said, come with us. If you don't, then we're going to leave you. And you walked away from that lifestyle. It's every time you bring your tithe and your offering and you paid the price. You worked hard for that money and you bring it to the house of God. It's not just a shout. It's not just you raise your hand. That's religion. No, this is your heart when you lift your hand. That's what God's after. Come on. I said, that's what God's after. Where's the givers? Where's the servants of God? Where's the worshipers of God? I'm going to give you a few moments to give God the fruit of your lips. Go ahead. All over the room. All over the room. All over the room. Everybody. Aubrey, sing it. David, sing it. Yeah, sing it. Lift your hands and just worship. Thanks for watching Freedom. Be sure to check us out on all social media platforms and subscribe to us on YouTube. We hope you enjoyed today's video. We'll see you soon.